Welcome back, you guys, to another Lunch with Liz and Elio. Um, so excited to have my beautiful friend Eva LaRue joining us today to catch up. She's kind of the co-host of Lunch with Liz. She's been on so many times. I hope you guys are good. Hi, you guys. Did you guys make it to the Respect Talk on Sunday? Just curious. Um, hope you're all doing really well. While we wait for the beautiful and talented Eva LaRue. She's back by popular demand. You guys kept asking for her again and again. So she's going to be joining us. Oh, thanks, you guys. Here she is. Eva's in the house. Let's see. Go live with her. Hey, Eva, send a request and then I can accept it. Let's see. Yeah, so anyway, this is the best way still under all of these circumstances to see your friends if you can't see them in person. Um, sorry you didn't make it to the talk, JD, I see that. Um, but you guys can see these talks soon. We're going to be putting them on YouTube or doing um, a podcast, the Respect Project podcast. So I hope you guys will come and join. Um, Eva is perfect. That's true, you guys. I'm so happy that she's going to be joining us today for a quick little lunch hour. Um, let's see. Hmm. All right, we have to wait for her to send a request. Here we go. All right, I see a lot of regulars here. Hi, you guys. Hope you're doing great. Hi. Yay, there it is. <laughs> Yay. How are you? Good. How are you? I love technology. We can like hang out together and not even have to sit in LA traffic cross town. To I know. <laughs> although, although I much prefer for you to come over. What are you doing tomorrow night? <laughs> Nothing. Are you come free? For, come for dinner. We're going to have a couple of friends over. Oh my God. I would love to. Okay. I'll be there. Be, be here. I will. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Cool. All right. See, oh my God. How are you? What's going on? Oh my God. I feel oh. like, I feel like you need to tell me so much. <laughs> I know. I feel like we haven't talked in ages. Oh my God. Um, I don't know. I mean, summer is just kind of chugging along. Do you feel like the days are melting into each other? And it's like this strange, where's my summer going? Kind of, I guess it always feels like that. I feel like I, I don't feel that summer's melting away. I feel like I'm melting away because I think I have hit menopause officially. Oh, you have. <laughs> Are you boiling? I feel like I am like, you like one... a boiling bag rice or something. Like <laughs> I do. I feel like I'm a constant like hot flash for real. Like nobody told me. I remember when I first started Law and Order, we paid the markers when when she was acting. If she broke into a hot flash, she'd be like, "Cut, cut!" And then, <laughs> and, and, and I mean, I was 27 years old, and I'm like, "What's going on?" She's like, "Hot flash." Now I've been thinking about her every day because I know exactly what she's talking about. Your whole face, your whole body, your arms, everything breaks out in a very uh, thin layer of sweat. And you yeah. need your hair and makeup people. <laughs> to come around after. And you need to be able to call cut in real life. Like, cut, hot flash. I'll totally. Be, oh, I would please. Like to. I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, by the way, I wanted to tell you also that Lifetime did decide to do a couple of respect talks. So for those of you who are here and you love Lifetime movies, we're going to be doing a few respect talk panels for uh, Lifetime to promote their films. But I think that that, you know, it'll be one of those things like we were talking about at lunch, you know, we could continue to discuss the conversation with them. Uh, that's awesome. I think that's yeah. right up their alley too. I mean, it's right. I mean, obviously, women are their are their demographic, and and it's. I think it's it's something that, um, not that they're missing, but that they could definitely add and would be a bonus for their network. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of those things that I don't go into their websites, but I do think that they could they could be poised for a daytime talk show for sure. Did that say, does Eva have menopause? Well, you know what? I already went through, I, I, um, I think I'm finished with menopause because, you know, I haven't, well, I haven't had my period in like three years now. And I did all the hot flash things. Um, really? Uh, yeah. About four years ago is when I started. And then, um, and now instead of, you know, I have a bunch of girlfriends that are doing the bioidenticals and that works really well for them. Um, you know, keeping them from wanting to rip their children's head off and and, oh, please, uh, oh, please and, text and me that. eat their way down the dog's body. Like, 
I, oh, so that, everybody that's, in their house why, that's why I was such a raging bitch last week. Okay, good to know. Good to yeah, know. that's it. You literally are like, <laughs> like, you know, when you feel like you want to climb out of your skin and, 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 you know, lay waste to everybody around you, you know, you're mid, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know if it's perimenopause or it's menopause or it's premenopause. I don't know which, which version of it we're in, but, um, but it did really help me to go, I went to a Chinese herbalist. I decided not to go the bio-identical route. Just right. because, some of my girlfriends were having some um, side effects from those. And okay. so I just thought, oh, I don't know if I want, uh, you know, so I went, I, I went the Chinese root route. That, that was what was good for me anyway. And so what I did was take um, Chinese herbs that helped support my body to create more estrogen instead of putting um, estrogen in it was helping my body create its own estrogen again and its own uh, progesterone again and its own testosterone again. So that I found like a nice, uh, I, I found it was really great because here's the other thing. Like, you know, I know there's some guys on here and you guys are like, really, do I really have here? Like well, stupid girl things. <laughs> but just really quickly, like, you know, there's lots of things that happens when your estrogen goes away and a lot of um a lot of women talk about this after having children about how they laugh and they pee themselves right or you know you cough and you and you pee yourself a little bit i, thought, I, I never had that it just happened when you were pregnant <laughs> yeah i thought yeah and it doesn't just happen when you're pregnant it also starts to happen when your estrogen starts to wane when you start to go through this premenopausal or postmenopausal or menopausal thing. And so I really, um, and I never had that after, uh, after I had Kaya, but I started to like, you know, and it, and it all went away when I started to do a little estrogen support. So I think that right. was helpful. Oh, did you go to a Chinese um, herbalist here in LA or where'd you go? Yeah, I went to um, um, Ron T Dragon, uh, Ron T Gardens Dragon Herbs. And they've okay. been really great. Yeah, I really, I really loved them. Oh, I'm gonna go. People are flipping out over you. They love you so much. Oh, thank you. Oh, it says oh. Mic uh, micronized progesterone is much better. Okay, thanks for that. I will totally look that up. Here's the thing. I think women, once we all get chitty chatting, I think every I think women have the best information because everybody's gone down their own rabbit hole on it. So yeah. I, I love my girlfriends and you guys, all you guys typing in are all my new girlfriends. Um, any information is good information because you've tried it out. Micronized progesterone. Yeah, I'm gonna look that up now. I am, that. I am too. Somebody said here they wish they that Lifetime would do a bloopers a bloopers movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, a friend of mine, Cooper Nielsen, just popped up. Hi, Gert. Hi, hi, guy. Hi. <laughs> um, so yeah. talk about. Be funny? Can you tell? Is it too personal to talk about the fiasco? Which one? Oh, Which for fiasco? Forget it, forget it, forget it. Um, <laughs> Wait, text me. Text me. What, what, what is it? Oh, oh, um, no, I can't talk about it. Yeah, we can't get into that. Yeah, yeah, because it's not my fiasco to tell. Yes. And yeah. I think it was far too humiliating. Yes. Um, it's just a family, net net, you guys, like a family member um, had a, a, a close family member had a fiasco happen that was really humiliating and and um, it was a relationship thing. And the, the you know, fiance just did something like horribly humiliating. So, um, yeah, I don't so, want to. Um, <laughs> so anyway, yes, we won't do that. Um, are you sc slammed and getting going back to like trying to go back to work? I mean, what's happening work wise? Yeah, work wise, I've just been um, auditioning for things. But like, here's like. So here's the strange thing for, you know, Elizabeth and I, just because you have an insanely successful TV show that runs for 10 years or 15 years or however long, however long it runs, doesn't mean you're going to end up like jumping right into another show right away. I feel like, you know, a lot of us who have come yeah. off these long running shows have a difficult time finding regular work again. I've, you know, doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that and then done, you know, Hallmark movie and a little series and a little this and that, but, but nothing that I've jumped right back into, um, into a regular gig, which I'm really ready for now. I don't think I was ready for it in the last six years while my daughter was in high school. I really wanted to be home. I, I knew I only had this finite amount of time left with her before our lives change. She goes off to college. She be, starts her own life. So I didn't, I wasn't willing to give that up, you know, 
um, and now that she's in, now that she's going back to college for her second year but in August, I'm ready. Things, don't you think that's a little bit how things happen, like as they should in a sense? I mean, I feel the same way. I feel like after Law and Order, um, you know, maybe jumping into a series for a decade would have just been too difficult for me as a single mom. But now I feel like I have the freedom to do that. Um, you know, or whatever, or like we've talked about sometimes, and I'm sure most of you guys who are with us today who've gone through COVID, you know, relate to, um, you know, closings create openings. And yeah. so times when I've had tremendous career stress and not gotten work and, and it opens up other opportunities, like I wrote my book about motherhood, or yeah. like, you know, it drove me in a direction, um, you know, to pursue directing or whatever, you know, it just yeah. creates creates openings, you know, creates opportunity. And, and, and I think when we have this hiatus and we start looking at what we're really interested, like interested in and what our passions are. And like you said, it was motherhood and it took you down. A, it opened up a whole different world for you as a, as a writer, as a, I, I cannot help. Sorry, squirrel. Um, but the whole world is here right now. Like it, I've seen France, Guatemala, Colombia, Switzerland, Portugal, Italy, Brazil, like, it's, oh my God, it's like really awesome. They're from all over the world. We've got like flags from everywhere. You're right. It's hi, welcome. This is awesome. I know. Welcome to welcome to lunch with Liz and Eva. We just like to hang out and talk about shit together publicly. <laughs> <laughs> we just like to, to air our personal shit while y'all listen. Phil <laughs> is in the house. Florida. Hey Germany, Florida, Brazil. <laughs> Jamaica. England is in the house. I love it. Dubai is here. Dubai, <laughs> Canada. It's awesome. And love to United travel. States. <laughs> Chile. North uh, Texas. Norco, where I'm from. Hey, Norco. Oh, my God. So cool. Oh, I'm sorry. What You just said something. I got like... A, I I love to travel. You traveled a lot during COVID. Where did you go? Yeah. I traveled a lot. Um, I... I uh, Everybody's and I know I know it was dangerous and a lot of people were like I can't believe you're traveling during covid but for me um unfortunately I mean covid and, and we were afraid of it and we were as careful as we could be but covid ended up being a real backdrop for what was happening with us and we've discussed this before which I I just right. Kaya and I had so much loss that year and we really really were struggling we're struggling with each other because we were grieving very differently and she was right. so angry and, and we were both in a flat out depression. And, yeah. um, and so at one point when Croatia decided to open up to Americans in September, and I know Croatia quite well because I'd already been there two times before. And I was like, I've died. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And I went for yeah. a month. Wow. <laughs> that was awesome. I'll call you next time. I know. Like, I know. Stop, I, saw some and roll. Of, I saw so. some of your beautiful trips on your Instagram. Yeah, people are really still can. people are still calling out where they're from. Let's see. Um, we've got, let's go back. We've got France, Texas, Chile. Um, Here's Croatia. Hey, Croatia. The East Coast is here, Mexico. <laughs> yep, Croatia's here. That must have been somebody you met on your trip. Brazil. Portugal, Germany, Texas, Poland. Seattle. See, this is why, you know, Super having cool. done this... This doing this during COVID and creating a community was so addictive because the truth is like you're like we're doing right now, Las Vegas, England, Denver, Colorado, Indiana, you UK. know, it's like you're really connected to people and you've, you know, a community was created, Munich, Michigan. It's like, and I still, over. you know, ironically, yeah, Iceland, but living in Spain. Okay. Houston's in the house. Love it. Love it. Some more Croatia. I Mexico. know, but it really, it really, it really connects us, you know, and even still, it's such a strange time. You've heard about this new strain that everybody's worried about now. Are you putting a mask <laughs> back on in most places or no? Um, not, not yet, but I know it's on the rise here in, in Los Angeles. Are you, are you masking up yet? I'm not, I'm too selfishly, you know, wanting to be normal, but I don't go to that many places, you know, really. Yeah. 
I mean, I go to Barry's boot camp. That's about it because I'm trying to lose my my COVID twenty, my freshman, <laughs> my freshman twenty that I gave. <laughs> and now we're going to be the what, what is what are the, the var we're going to be you know Delta variant lockdown instead of you know no I just God that just would no suck. but you know, know what we're prepped we're prepared. We're prepared like we've all we done are. it now we know how how to i think we've found a ways to to cope you to know cope. mental to health cope. is a mental health issues are a real thing and i think we're i really we're wanna, all finding ways i want to send you the talk from sunday the respect talk that i did um it was called choosing love and there were some incredible people on it and again for you guys who weren't with us um, the topic was about choosing love in the face of pain, you know, and how can we do that? I mean, it's a skill. It's something that needs to be practiced. Um, I'd love to share with you. Also on August 8th, I'm going to be doing a talk. I'll tell you about it, but it's about, um, you know, not being afraid of change. And, um, I think maybe if you're available, it'd be great to have you on it. Yeah. Oh God. I would love that on the 8th, August 8th, August 8th, 12 PM okay. Pacific okay. time. That'll okay. be the next talk awesome that I would love to because don't you find that people you know mostly they're miserable you know they're if they're you know change is so frightening and that they're not they don't feel comfortable um you know even if they're unhappy making a big change moving even if they don't love where they live they don't move they don't you know people are you know they're afraid to lose sight of the land and I think what we were talking about in regards to acting and not getting work for a while and having had big shows and this and that, you know, we're so used to, um, you know, opportunity coming out of, out of nothing, you know, so we're, yeah. I think that's like making it happen. And mm -hmm. it's, and it's definitely, you know, aligning with um, going back to what you were just saying about change and the fear that's attached to that. I, I think, um, it's for me, it's been a, a real lesson and a practice in trying to align with um, trying to align with where I where I want to be going now, rather mm -hmm. than aligning with my fear of not having what I want. Do you know what I mean? Because I really think that you that that the world, the universe, God, whatever you want to call meets your energy where your energy is. Mm -hmm. So if you are sitting in fear of lack and fear of, of things, yeah. then, then, you know, God can kind of only meet you where you are. Yeah. And so I've been really trying to practice um, changing my perspective and changing my literal feeling about, no, it's just now it's a world of possibilities. Anything could happen. Yeah. How exciting is that? Like anything could happen. It's so, all of can, God's miracles could happen. Like anything could happen now. Yeah. I mean, listen, and during COVID better than I, I hope mean, better for, than I had thought about, you know? Yeah. I mean, just, you know, being open to the unexpected and embracing change. And, you know, we know it even just, you know, auditioning for things, you really want something and you don't get it. And then suddenly you get something better, you know, or, What's happened for you and I during COVID is we've realized we really love hosting together. So we're sort of working on the idea of doing a talk show together. Yeah. So things come out of, you create opportunity, you know, out of nothing, you know, and I think mm -hmm. people need to feel, not need to, but, you know, one, it's, it's a struggle to feel comfortable in nothingness, you know, because you're so down or you get so depressed or you feel so lost or you're like, why me? As opposed to, okay, nothing's here, so I'm now going to create something. And I, I do think during COVID, people really had an opportunity to readdress their lives, their lifestyles, where they lived, you know, with some fearlessness because, you know, we, we were being all pushed to our limits. Yeah, yeah it's so true. I think, um, I think because, and like you said, we're, we're always living in some little constant feeling of fear of change, whether you like where you live or you don't, or whether you like your job or you don't. Um, or, and you don't like it, but you're, you have to stay in it or you feel like you have to stay because changing would be too big and too exhausting an idea. And, yeah. and I, think, um, I think the great thing about COVID is that it put us all in a universal timeout. Like we, across the board, the whole world was in the same boat. And we, yeah. really, and, and we were so, like you said, pushed to the limit with our, our, our fear and um, loss yeah, I mean, of, you know, loss you of are, hope. Yeah, 
also our lives were at risk. You know, what yeah. if we got it and you're asking yourself big questions like, do I like where I live? Do I like who I'm married to? Do I like what I do? Mm -hmm. Oh, I just got fired. They, they had to downsize. So mm -hmm. now I have to completely reinvent myself. So yeah, I think uh, there is a sense of, um, you know, time is not on our side and we don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. So, you know, let's really re sort of readdress and maybe, you know, redo and not be afraid of change. Yeah, not be afraid of change. I think that's the gift that we got out of it. And not only that, but but a real gift of digging deep for hope and faith. Where, yeah. you know, we, we easily lost hope and faith over like, like much smaller things before COVID happened. Suddenly, we were all at a loss for hope and faith because we had no idea what was coming down the pike and when and if this would ever end. And, um, and then and, and, and here we are again, like at this point, it is this uh, spiritual sort of moment or crisis that we're like living through because of course now with this other strain you know what are you going to do with that and how is that going to impact you i where people are in the rest of the world are you still experiencing covid and are you now experiencing this other strain what's happening with all of that what is it called again the delta variant the delta variant doesn't yeah. it sound like a book title or a feature film title <laughs> the delta variant the it delta like, variant yeah the delta variant coming to a theater near you <laughs> exactly please, <laughs> please don't come to a theater near me i mean yeah. i went into the grocery store and and don't come to a grocery store near again. me uh, yeah people are wearing masks inside and that's oh. fine i mean i get it like everybody's you know I, 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 we're going to have PTSD for a little while, you know, a few years. I, sure. I've had some social anxiety. What about you? Yeah, I've had, you know, you, I, going out without masks. Yeah. Feels like walking a tightrope. Yeah. You know, like, are we allowed or not allowed? Is anybody else, you know, I don't know. Um, but I'm enjoying yeah. it. <laughs> Definitely enjoying it. Well, somebody here said, um, and I think we should end on this note, you two should be in a movie together someday. Well, you guys, we are very much trying to figure out a TV series or a talk show or a movie to do together. That is definitely at the top of our agenda. Um, but Eva, such a, you're such a beautiful light, and I always oh think such God. a gift. You and everybody too, was honey. asking, when's Eva coming back? When's Eva coming back? When's Eva coming back? <laughs> so thanks. I know you've done this so many times. You're like, no, I love this. Are you kidding? Please don't stop inviting me. I really, really love this. And I love getting a chance to really, like, I feel like we connected with the world right now today. Like we that was really it. exciting to get to see everybody from all the different places. And, and, and I do, I remember there was, um, there was something that I read that said that you have three choices to make when you are in a position that you that that is toxic. You no longer that is making your life hellish. You can um, you can complain about it. Just sit there and complain about it, and not change it, and nothing changes. You can be courageous enough to jump in there and totally change it. Oh, the problem with the first one is if you complain and whine about it and you're not ready to change it, you make everybody around you miserable that you're working with or doing that with. Everybody's miserable because you're miserable. And, um, or you can have the courage to completely change it and, and be fearless and go. And your only third other choice is to comply, change your perspective and get happy with it and just find what parts of that thing do make you happy and focus on that. There, and, and when you think about it, yeah, there really are only three, three choices. One of, my, one, of, one, of, one of my friends, uh, Philip, who will be on the talk, the Respect Project talk on August 8th, which I hope you'll be on, yeah, um, yeah. he sent me a text this morning and he said, did Obama become president before or after he was voted president? You know, yeah. did, yeah. you know did so-and-so, you know, he sent me a list of questions. Obviously, the point of it is you become something, you, be, you know, your thoughts become things. Yeah, yeah. thoughts so become things. You, I, I write down every three months my goals I read them every morning and that is my that is the way that I stay focused and try to keep my mind focused on what I want versus what crops up inside of me which is fear and security you know self yeah whatever everybody else you know goes through that you know upends you or gets, you know creates obstacles or you know is the antithesis of what you really want right Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
and to stay positive about kind of knowing that it's all working behind the scenes for you. Like it's on its way. And to be childlike to it with your dreams for your life. You know, it ain't over till it's over. My mother was um, met the love of her life when she was 50. Uh, she thought she would never end up with somebody ever again. So I guess I just feel like, you know, we can make our life whatever we want to make it whenever we decide to take control of our minds. And so that's sort of what the August 8th talk will be about, how we can be creative with our curious mind to embrace change and, and create, you know, changes in our, in our lives that make us happier. Yeah. yeah. And what we, and how to shift our focus. And, and I mean, I have to catch myself during the day, like plenty of times during the day where I find myself on a negative thought and I'm like, Oh, I, I, it's just, it's a practice. It's getting slightly easier, but it's definitely a practice. Like catch myself mid critical thought and exchange it for focusing on something. Like you said, what you think about, you bring about. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I, I love that I got you. Talk to you so my beauty. I, <laughs> thank you for making time to come see us this lunchtime. And um, I will see you tomorrow night for dinner. I'll see you tomorrow night for dinner. Cool. I'll be there. Okay. okay. All okay. right, you guys. Thanks for joining us on Lunch with Liz. Be well, be safe. And we will see you on Thursday, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Bye, honey. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks. <laughs>